You ask for it, and you will get it. A Formula 2 beginner's guide is something that's not really out there at the moment. And this weekend, for Bahrain, for the Formula 1 Grand Prix, also sees the return of Formula 2 for 2019. There's loads of big names in the sport this year. And with the Formula 1 game now officially announcing that Formula 2 is going to be in the game, I'm sure plenty of you would love to know, what's the deal? With Formula 2, is it the same as Formula 1? The answer is no. <laughs> the answer is they're actually quite different in almost every single shape of the word. Almost every single rule, regulation, the way they do things is different. And maybe that's because I'm a die-hard Formula 1 fan and just little things just seem absurdly different. But really, it is a crazily different sport from Formula 1. However, it's generally seen as the way, the, the clearest route for young drivers to get into Formula 1. Just quickly, I'll announce as the calendar for the year goes onto the screen, something that people always ask me, and this is generally quite a concise beginner's guide for Formula 2, so if you've got any extra questions, feel free to throw them in the comments below, and I'll answer them as best I can. I'm always checking up on beginner's guys' comments. However, people say, well, if a driver's not in Formula 1, why don't they go back to Formula 2? And the reason is, is that either, if you become Formula 2 world champion, you can't go back into Formula 2, but also, if you complete one full season of Formula 1, you can't go back to Formula 2. So we have seen drivers in the past, like Roberto Meri, do half a season of Formula 1, and then go back to Formula 2, but you can't do a full season. And as you can see on screen, with the calendar there, 12 rounds, which equals 24 races, takes part in the occasional Formula 1 Grand Prix weekend. So at the Azerbaijan Grand Prix, you will see a Formula 2 race. At the Belgian Grand Prix, you will also see a Formula 2 race weekend, but not at every single race weekend, including the likes of Singapore. There's no Formula 2 race in Singapore. So that's just a rough guideline, and it's always something to keep an eye out for over the Formula 1 season. Now, the Formula 2 weekend is a little bit different to Formula 1. Just one practice session that comes on the Friday, and that's a 45-minute length practice session. Also on Friday, we have qualifying, a 30-minute session. Not really anything like the Formula 1 session with Q1, Q2, Q3. In Formula 2, the way they do it is they just have 30 minutes to post the fastest lap time. Very straightforward in Formula 2, and with just 30 minutes, it's... Yeah, it's a lot more simple than the way Formula 1 does it. However, as we'll see a little bit later on, because this is what is known as a, a spec series, or very close to it, what is known as a spec series, the cars are almost identical. So qualifying's a lot closer and un more, more unpredictable. On Saturday, we have the feature race, and on Sunday, we have the sprint race. Now, going into a little bit more detail, because a feature race and a sprint race is quite a, a strange concept when you compare it to a lot of other motorsports. So Saturday we have the feature race, and this is 180 kilometer race, that's how races are determined how long they are, and this is the main race, the, the big daddy of the race weekend. There's one mandatory pit stop, so you have to do a minimum of one pit stops, changing a tyre compound, so there are four dry tyre compounds and they've got to use at least two and the point system is, is the exact same as Formula One except if you get pole position on the Friday you pick up four points and fastest lap you get two points in Formula Two. Formula One you just get the one so there's a maximum <laughs> of 31 points if someone gets pole position fastest lap and the race win in Formula Two which we saw a couple of drivers do last season but this is the, the big daddy of the weekend but then on Sunday we've got a smaller race so 120 kilometers or 60 kilometers shorter a quicker race overall only the top eight drivers score points fastest lap again gets two points but how this race is decided or the starting order I should say is what is known as a reverse grid this is not the whole entire grid swapped around so drivers don't strategically crash themselves out on a, on a Saturday to get a better start on a Sunday. That, that's not how it works. The top eight drivers, so first place to eighth place in the Saturday race, get flipped around. So whoever won the Saturday race starts eighth on the Sunday race. Ninth to 20th, they start exactly where they finished. So if you finish ninth on Saturday, you start ninth. If you finished seventh, you'll start second on the grid. So that top eight is reversed but the rest of the field is exactly how it was. So if you have a trashy Saturday, 
your DNF on the Saturday, you've almost screwed yourself for the Sunday. The Formula 2 car itself, as I said, this is almost as close as you're going to get to a proper spec series. The chassis is produced by Dallara. They actually produced the chassis for Haas F1 team. It is a different chassis to the Formula 1 cars, so you may have seen in these couple of pictures that have gone by, it's, it's a little different. It's For a die-hard fan, you might be able to spot the difference, but maybe if you're a little bit more of a casual fan, it, it, it's just the paintwork that you see is different, which is fine, but they are different chassis. And you will see, especially as a side shot of the car, that they are fairly different, to be quite honest with you. Tyres, they run Pirelli tyres, the exact same as Formula 1. They run four dry compounds and two wet compounds. So the wet is the wet and the intermediates. And the dry compounds, um, I, I can't deny, I've not seen anywhere the official names for them yet. They don't seem to have surfaced. Um, coverage for Formula 2 is, is always very minimum, so you will see over the weekend they will mention this, but generally you just have your primes, your mediums, it, it, they, it's not as big a factor in Formula 2, I, I would generally say. Um, but throwing that out there, that, that is in there. But also, I just wanted to go through some notable drivers. I've done this in my Formula 1 beginner's guide and my Formula E beginner's guide to just get new fans just trying an idea of who to support in the championship and who's, well, who I think are guys that you might recognise the name of. Starting with, I think, probably the most famous driver in Formula 2 this year. A reason why a lot of people are going to be watching Formula 2 this year. And Mick Schumacher, son of Michael Schumacher, joins the fold driving for Prima. There's no necessarily manufacturers in Formula 2. There's no Renault B team. There's no Ferrari B team as such. Um, Sauber Junior team is actually in Formula 2 this year, but teams-wise, they're all very similar. Another driver that you might be interested in, in McLaren, or is the McLaren test driver, Sergio Sete Camera. The Brazilian, whereas Schumacher was in his first year, Camera is in his third year driving for Dams, one of my personal favourite teams in Formula 2. He could be an outside shot at the championship this year. So if you're looking to support someone a little bit different, maybe he is who you go for. We've got a female driver in Formula 2 this year. So ladies, if you're interested in following female drivers, then Tatiana Calderon is probably the person you want to be supporting. Alfa Romeo Lynx. Very impressive test driver for the Formula One team. She's driving for Arden this year, which is almost the Force India of Formula Two because it's the same sponsor, BWT Arden. So they're the Pink Panthers of Formula Two, if you will. Her teammate is GP3 champion as well. So that's going to be a really good fight at that team. Another notable name in Formula Two this year is Alesi, Giuliano Alesi, son of former Formula One race winner Jean Alesi. He's been solid over the past couple of seasons in GP3. I don't really think he's going to be a flashy, in-your-face, winning races all the time driver, but he could surprise a few people. So a Lacey's going to be one I'm going to be looking at this year. Only two more now. Jack Aitken, someone who I imagine if you follow YouTube a fair bit, especially Formula 1 side of things, Jack Aitken features heavily on WTF1 and their podcasts and race reviews, so a lot of people might know his name. He had an okay first season in Formula 2 last year. He swapped teams and is now in the orange car, which is the Campos. I expect him to, to be better this year and maybe could be in the hunt for the championship. And then the last driver is the Flying Dutchman of Formula 2, Nick De Vries. Also former McLaren young driver. He's had two seasons in Formula 2 so far. Last season finished fourth, only behind Russell Norris and Alex Albon. I think he is the favourite for the championship, so keep an eye out for Nick De Vries. But that is it for your Formula 2 beginner's guide. Again, it's a lot shorter than the ones I've done for Formula 1 and Formula E. So if you do have any questions, throw them in the comments section below. And if you are aware, the 2018 Formula 1 guide I did, people still comment on that. And I still try to respond as best I can. Because that's the whole point of these videos, to try and help you guys learn about Formula 2. The season starts this weekend in Bahrain and at 1 o'clock today, in actual fact, which I imagine this becomes quite irrelevant after today, qualifying starts for the first race of the season. So I'm really looking forward to that one. 
hopefully you've learned a little bit about Formula 2. Thank you for watching as always. If you if you enjoy Formula 2, just throwing this out there as well, I will be doing race reviews for every single race this season. So if you want to keep up to date to Formula 2, feel free to subscribe. And that's it. That, that is it from me. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.